Hey, my name is Dylan Kotecki. I am the software and video educator at On One. Oftentimes when we're photographing landscapes, we're dealing with dust spots, blemishes, imperfections. We're dealing with distractions that are inherent to the actual landscape. People standing on a beach that we don't want them to be there. Power poles, power lines, things like that. So I just wanted to show you a few different examples here on how you can get rid of those distracting elements from your photographs using On One Photo Raw. So let's first start with the easiest to get rid of, just dust spots, hairs, imperfections, things like that, that are typically on your lens or sensor, and then they show up in the editing room later on. So let me grab this photograph here. Let's take it into the edit module. And right out of the gate, you can see we have this pretty distracting element there. I think it's a dust spot, um, piece of lint or something like that that was on my sensor. And it's just obviously a distracting element within the scene. So if we want to get rid of that really easily, we can do that just using the retouching tools inside of On One Photo Raw. And one of my favorite tools to use is the healing brush. The healing brush is a great way to get rid of any dust spots or imperfections within your image simply by painting over that little area. And then you can use a neighboring region to simply heal that imperfection or dust spot from your image. So let's go over to the left side of our screen here instead of on one photo run we're just going to grab our retouch tools inside of our retouch tools we have this handy dandy tool here the healing brush this is typically what i use 90 percent of the time when i'm removing distracting elements from my scenery it's really easy to use and there's a bunch of different modes that you can use inside of it as well to get rid of any distracting elements from your photograph so to select that, you can grab it up here in your top tool modifier bar, or you can just hit Q on your keyboard. So what we're going to do here is we're actually going to zoom in a little bit to this area where we have this distracting element. And it's pretty obvious that we have this as a distraction within our scene. It obviously shouldn't be there. But what we can do to visualize more of the imperfections and dust spots and really see all of the distracting elements within our scene is we can just go up to this top tool modifier bar and we can choose these little pair of glasses here. So we can just select that, and this is the visualize dust option. Now you can see right out of the gate, we have this distracting element that we saw before, but we also have these two other dust spots that we didn't notice. Now this probably isn't a huge deal, especially this one here, but this one could become distracting, especially if we're brightening up an area within the sky or we're adding in contrast. These different distracting elements be can become a lot more apparent later on when we're editing. So it's great to get ahead of the game and really just remove all of those distractions right out of the starting point here, just so that we can make sure that later on when we're editing, we don't see any of those distractions when we're adding in contrast, adding in detail, texture, things like that. So I have the visualize dust option enabled, and you can see we can view all of these other little distractions within our scene. And so to use the healing brush, we're gonna make sure that our feathering is at around 25. I typically use 25 as my feathering. I think that's the default feathering. You can also bring your feathering up a little bit more if you'd like to have a softer brush edge. But keep in mind, the more feathering you have, the more of that blending is going to go into the center of your healing. And so I typically use just around 25 or so. And what we're going to do is we're just going to make sure that we have this mode heal enabled. We'll talk about these other modes later on, but for right now, let's just talk about this heal option. Heal is typically used when you're wanting to take a distracting element out of your scene and just heal it with a neighboring region that can cover that little distraction up. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to increase my brush size to about the same size as the distracting element that I'm trying to remove. I could just brush over that. You can see I've brushed over that little area and it's given me these two little handles here. I have this green handle and this red handle. The green handle is the neighboring region. So it's the area that I'm using to heal this distracting element. So all I have to do to move that around is just grab that green handle there and I can move this around anywhere I need to. So let's move it about right there. Now we can also move this red handle as well to move where we place that healing into. And I'm seeing we have a little bit of this sort of crowning going on up here. So I'm just going to create another healings area there. And I'll just pull this down to get rid of that. So if we hit the backslash key on our keyboard, just gotten rid of that distracting element there. Let me remove my cursor there. So you can also use the same technique for other distracting elements within your scene, such as these little dust spots down here. If we want to get rid of these, 
You can just make the brush size about the size of that distraction. We'll just brush in there and we can get rid of any of those different regions that we don't want within our photograph. Just like that, we've cleaned up that sky region just by using our healing brush. And remember, you can move those different neighboring regions around within your scene just by grabbing those different handles. And once you move on when you're editing, so if we go on and we modify the look of this photograph, we can always go back and readjust or remodify any of those retouching options by just grabbing our healing brush again. And we have all of those different handles there that we can modify. So if we need to adjust anything, for example, if we need to adjust, oh, there. So if we need to readjust any of these, we can just select that region. For example, this little region here, we can select that and we can then remodify it if we need to, or we can actually remove it as well. So that is the healing brush when it comes to just removing imperfections and small dust spots, things like that. But you can also use the healing brush to remove larger distracting elements, such as elements that are inherent to the landscape that you're photographing. So for example, if you're photographing a beach, you may want to remove the people that are standing on the water or on the sand, something like that, to create a much more natural landscape scene. So to do that, all we have to do is just go in, and let's just modify this image here and we'll do the same thing we did before. We're just gonna grab our healing brush and there's not obviously any people standing on this beach, but if you look into the long exposure water here in the foreground section, we have these little distracting pebbles and they're not too distracting in that region up there, but right here, they could be a little bit distracting to the viewer. So again, all we have to do is use our healing brush. We're just gonna paint over this little region there and then we can modify how we remove that distracting element. Made it a little too big there. It's really looking a little, a little off. And sometimes it takes just a little bit of playing around with it to ensure that you get the right neighboring region within the scene there. And I also probably shouldn't have gone that large with my brush. So typically when I'm using my healing brush, I'll just make sure that the brush is about the same size as the area that I'm healing. Just so again, ensure that it's a nice natural looking retouching but i think that looks pretty good and pro tip when you are using your healing brush you can modify the brush size with the bracket keys on your keyboard so the left bracket will decrease the size and the right bracket will increase the size maybe this one here this little guy there so if we pull up on the midtones a little bit here and we look at this specific section if we hit the backslash key on our keyboard we're just getting rid of those small distracting elements within our scene that could just stray the viewer's eye into an area that we don't want it to be in or keep their eye into in the foreground longer than we want it to be there. Hey, Eric Kona here, one of your instructors for the Travel Photography Conference, and I can't wait to be teaching alongside some of the best in the industry. Go over to kelby1live.com and learn more. I hope to see you there.